Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil falan tajida lahu waliyan murshida wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli fa ya ibadallah usi nafsi wa iyyakum bi taqwa Allah faqad faza al muttaqun wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun fa qala ta'ala a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون Before we get into the main topic of the of the khutbah I would like to remind everyone to keep our brothers and sisters in Palestine in Yemen in Sudan in Kashmir and all over the world in our dua we can never get too desensitized about this. So therefore, keep doing whatever you can. Keep sharing the atrocities on social media. Keep the boycott. Keep attending the protests. Keep donating. And also keep them in your prayers. Wake up for Fajr and mention their names in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give them picture, Amin. هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم يتسوى عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين To begin, I would like to take us back to the year 600. It was a year when there was an ongoing struggle between two civilizations, two empires, and two superpower nations. They were trying to conquer each other, trying to expand, trying to expand their territories. And so one of them is uh, the Eastern Roman Empire, also known as the Byzantine Empire, which was the nation that had the most advancement in their technologies during that time. The traces of their advancement can still be seen up until today. They had massive buildings like Coliseum, the Hagia Sophia, the Pantheon. They built roads, dams, bathhouses. They even had sanitation system during back then. And their territories, they, their territories were filled with fertile lands and treasures from the sea. On the other side, there was the Sassanid Empire, also known as the Second Persian Empire, which was not far off in its advancement compared to the opposing empire. Although what they excelled was in their system of, admin, of administ, admin, system of administration. So if you ever work in a bureaucracy, you will find a similar system that was used, like back then, today. So when they're clashing, so who would eventually going to win? They had massive armies, massive lands, you know. And in the meanwhile, there's like small tribal nations in between these two empires. It's forgotten. None of, none of the empires even bothered to even conquer this land because they got really nothing, you know? It's the Arabs. They got no civilizations, no advancement, no resources, nothing. Although they did have the people, and we call them the Jahiliya. We call them the ignorant ones. Jahlun, by definitions, could mean lack of knowledge. It could also mean lack of morals, lack of goodness. The Jahil is the people who exudes this uh, this quality and bunched all these people together we get jahiliya and so it means in this era of jahiliya will f you will find all kinds of ignorance all kinds of sins all kinds of immorality being committed so murder happens all the time so for example if there's like a man from a tribe a they were in fight with a, a man from a tribe b and for, for whatever reasons like tribe the people the one guy from the tribe a killed the tribe b and the tribe B, like the tribe B doesn't like it, so they kill two of the tribe A. Okay, they retaliate. Yeah? 
and that people from the tribe A doesn't like it when, when like two of them get killed, so they kill more from the tribe B. They kill like, four of them. And you know what happened after that. <laughs> and so they kill each other so much that they had to invent like sacred months. So okay, like guys, like uh, we've been killing so much, we're gonna get genocided. <laughs> so let's um, let's let's not kill in this month, okay? It's sacred months. Okay? And also, zina is everywhere. Shamelessness. They had this concept where if a man, yeah, have have a wife, and there's another man who has also have wives, and they got bored of each other's wives, they used to swap for like one night. And also, one of the practices during back then, if a man had a son, yeah, and that man has multiple wives, yeah. Excluding his mother, if a man that if that man passed away, all the wives, excluding his like the mother of that son, get inherited by the son. Hallelujah. They used to be so shameless. They even their ibadah they is doing they 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 used to be doing tawaf but naked, no clothes. Subhanallah. And drinking alcohol, they're the master of it. So if you were to picture someone getting drunk like today. And probably they're gonna probably go in like a pub, they get wasted, go back home, sobered up, get hungover. That's like only one cycle. People back then used to get drunk five times a day. Five times. So get drunk, sobered up, get drunk again, sober up. <laughs> yeah. They're the master for like they drink wine, they drink like all the hammer, all the alcohol, like they, like, like it was water basically. And women women were treated like property, elderly were disrespected, orphans are all neglected. The men used to be the the men used to be used to bury their daughters' lives. They had this idea where if you had daughters, then you're not manly enough. So they used to kill it, alive basically. Uh, the nicer ones from them is is probably is basically exiling like the wife and the daughters. Like okay, they used to make two different huts. One of them is in the back, like completely like hidden from like from the public. So if you, you can name any immorality, then you would find it, it existed during the Jahila period. Although the worst of all, the worst of all, they used to associate partners with Allah by worshipping idols. They used to uh, desecrate the house of Allah, the sacred house of Allah, by putting a lot of like idols in it. Although, so, with that in mind, like, they had, although they had like one thing going for them, which was the richness of their language. Arabic language was like, uh, it was very descriptive, it was a really beautiful language. So, they used to be good at language, right? So Allah sent down like a prophet, Muhammad wasallam, to show them a miracle from they were used to being good at, which is the Quran. And within 23 years, 23 years, so remember like all these, these empires who've been fighting for like hundreds of years maybe? This small nation right here within 23 years conquered both of them. They got no resources, no civilization, no advancement, yet they conquered Two empires. They went from the worst of nations, from Jahiliya into Khair Ummah, from the from the worst of nations to the best of nations, and it's confirmed in the Quran. You are the best community ever raised for humanity. You encourage good. You forbid evil and believe in Allah. And after that, everywhere Islam reaches, so long as they, as, so long as the Sharia is established, it brings prosperity, bring advancement to society. And there's Islamic golden age. Islam brings the best out of the people. People who, to, who, who excel, who used to be good at something, for example. And when they instill Islam in their lives, they excel even more. So for example, we have Uthman ibn Affan and Abdurrahman ibn Awf, who were really already rich before Islam. And after they went through the Islamic curriculum taught by Muhammad wasallam, their wealth multiplied even more. So one day, Abdul Hamad ibn Awf was confronted by the Quraysh and was given choice to either follow Rasulullah to Hijrah to Yathrib or Medina and get his wealth taken away or stay in Mecca and keep all his wealth. Yeah? Leave the teaching of Islam, keep your wealth, or go to Yathrib with only your clothes that in, on your body. So yeah, used to be a rich man now become like really destitute, lost everything, only his clothes. He went to Hijrah to Mecca, and within like a, within a couple of years, he became the richest man in, in Medina. He went to the Medina, and he became the richest man in Medina, only in a couple of years. For example, Ali bin Abi Talib was a smart man before Islam, and after Islam, 
he became even more knowledgeable. Not only, not only did he excel in Islamic knowledge, he was also really good at mathematics. It was, it was like a profound mathematician. And even right now, right, there is not a single technology that we are using today except that it can be traced all the way back from the Islamic Golden Age. Yeah. In the Islamic Golden Age, there are Al Ghazali, Al Kindi, Ibn Sina with his medicine, Ibn Rushd, Al Farabi for the, the, chem the chemist. Yeah. So, if you know, like, if some of you have some knowledge in the programming, yeah. So, you know, like, a program has to run in, on an algorithm, right? Guess where the word comes from? Comes from Al Khwarizmi, the founder of that. So, yeah. That is, and that's Islam right there. Islam necessitates improvement. Islam is a change, and that's the main topic of the khutbah. Okay? So, actually, according to the 20th um, the study from the 20th century, people have to go through four steps of change. The first one is cognitive change. From not knowing to knowing. Yeah? The second one is the affective change. From not wanting to, to want to wanting, okay? The third one is motoric, not being able to do something, a motoric change. From not being able to do something and then to be able to do it. And then the last one is the behavior. When all the, the change is already embedded so deeply, it's already become a behavior, so become a habit, it's already part of the identity, okay? So I'm gonna give an example, right? Uh, there's like a conversation between father and his son, and the son was like eating a really delicious fruit, and the, 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 like the son says, like, Dad, I really like this fruit. Where does this come from? And the dad replies, Oh, it came from a plant, son. And show his son like, Oh, this is how a plant looks like. This is how it grows. And then, Oh, it's like that. And then the father proceeded to describe how the plants came to be. You know, the benefit of the plants, their fruits, their oxygen, plants like you know, plants like uh, prevented trees prevent landslide and all that, okay? And this is the cognitive change, right? The, the father relays information to the son. So the son went from not knowing about the trees to knowing about the trees, okay? And after enough information came the second change, the affection. Okay, dad, like, I want to plant some trees so I can harvest my own fruits, see? He want to do something now. Okay, so, um, so with enough affection, so with enough knowledge, then comes the affection. Now the son wants to actually start apply his knowledge. But he doesn't know how to do it, right? And then the third one come in. And then the dad teach, taught like the kids how to plant the trees. And with enough affection come the... And it's time to apply the knowledge. And with, that, with enough knowledge comes the affections to want to do something. And then with enough, with enough affection, it has the motivation to start like learning how to apply the knowledge. And, uh, and with, not, with enough time, it turns into a behavior. It turns into the, last, the final change, which is the behavioral change, right? Suddenly, this, this kid already maintaining a whole garden by himself. And probably already, you know, reap the benefits, the fruits of the, of, uh, the labor. Okay. So, the first that I recited in the beginning was this uh, first one, the Surat al Jumar, the second, second first, yeah? So, the, the study that was conducted on the 20th century, the Quran, the four steps, right? Four steps of change. The Quran already has it, like, all the way, the 1400 years ago. So let's, let's pay attention. Yatslu alayhim ayati. Yatslu alayhim ayati. Reciting the word of Allah. Letting people know is the cognitive part of, of, like, of the change, basically. Our, so our Prophet wasallam used to recite the Quran, telling people about the haq, telling people about the truth, teaching, teaching them about, uh, telling them about Tawheed, Allah and Jannah, and, you know, all the benefits of becoming a Muslim. And also, so Rasulullah wasallam also used to warn the people about the punishment of rejecting the message. And when the people, you know, the, their hearts started becoming softened, you know, oh, I like this religion, I want to join. And then the second part begin, what well, yuzaki him. They're, they're now purified. It's this, uh, yuzaki him is like similar to the state of affection. When you are in the state of pre -pur when you're pure, when you are purified, then you start wanting to learn more about how to do things according to the Quran Sunnah. And finally, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaching them accordingly. I, and the, and, the, and the last, uh, the, the third part, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ The kitab is the, is the part, you know, like who, the way to do ibadah. From not, knowing to, uh, from not knowing about Islam and then wanting to learn about the Quran and Sunnah and now they know how to do ibadah. 
And then the last part, وَيُعَلِمْهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ And then the finally, the behavior, the wisdom finally gets into the heart of the believer and they become like, uh, they, no, they, uh, that's the behavioral change right there. Okay. Islam is now part of their identity. وَإِن كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُنَا فِي ضَلَانٍ مُبِينٍ So previously, they used to be the jahiliyyah. They used to do all kinds of things, immorals. They used to be lost, yeah, ignorance. And after Islam, Islam came, they turned from the, uh, they turned from the worst of nations to the best of nations, from jahiliyyah to khayru ummah. And this is how change happens according to the Quran. With this, I would like to later address two audiences from the second part of the khutbah. Barakallahu, barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikfi al-Hakim innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina al-Anbiya wa al-Mutsaleen wa ala alihi now that we know the process of change already, so I would like to address some of you who might already have Islam as your full identity, who doesn't show, who doesn't, who's not afraid to show their Islam, who already come to the messages regularly, you know, you, who already avoid all the all the things haram and all that, and you want your maybe your, and you already had the behavioral change, right? And you would love your family members, maybe your sons, your daughters, your siblings, your parents, or maybe your close friends on the same path as you do, right? So we have to keep in mind that Islam is a gradual change. You see, it's a step-by-step -step process. You can never force Islam on anyone. You can never tell uh, people, you know, for example, the parents keep telling the kids to pray, but without teaching them the Islam first. What, what, what do you mean I have to pray, you know? You cannot force it. Of course, they're going to pray, but they, you know, the connection is not there just yet. Yeah? So with that, like, so learn about this change. Yeah? Keep relaying the message. The best thing that you do is to keep relaying the message and just to be the best of example. You know? Sometimes we get the situations whereby you know, just talking about Islam, uh, some of your family member talk about, you talk about Islam, and they already have like, they already, you know, already have negative re negative reactions, they're gonna become dismissive. Oh yeah, yeah, we know already, you know. It's all about Islam. You're becoming so so extreme, what are you doing? Or something like that, yeah. Oh no, he's gonna give all this lecture again. So if that's already happened, then I think all you gotta do just to be the best of example. Yeah? So there's a story in Indonesia, an example, where there was a sister's halakha. Yeah. So, and then uh, after going to the halakha for some time, the husbands of the sisters, like noticing something from their wives. The, the wives are becoming so, so caring. Softer, you know, soft, softer, softer in demeanor in the, in the way they speak and become kinder too, care more about the deen. So basically the husbands, okay, like what happened to my wives? Suddenly become, you become like this. You, uh, I want to I want to know what you're doing, you know. So now the husbands, after the sister halakha was established, now the husbands want to start their own brother's halakha. Yeah. And sometimes the reasons why a person hasn't really changed when you want them to, and sometimes maybe it turns out that we haven't really changed that much sometimes. And that's why, like, it's always good to keep the reflections, you know. Always uh, assess, like, our own iman, our own taqwa, you know. Sometimes it's like uh, maybe we're still doing some things that prevents them to accept an Islam, you know? I, I, I mean, prevent them from accepting, uh, from going to the same path as you do. So, don't forget to keep making dua for them. Always keep them to make dua because Allah is the one who opens their heart. So, you know, the, the one of the person who is a very who contributed so much to our Prophet Sallallahu was, uh, was his uncle, Abu Talib. Yet, the, Abu Talib already, uh, already did so much for Prophet. He housed them, 
he gives he gives he gives him protections, you know. But at the end of his life, he hasn't taken Islam yet. He died a Catholic. So, Allah did not choose Islam for him. Allah chose Islam for you. You are more worthy. Uh, Allah sees in you what He doesn't see in Abu, Tal in Abu Talib. So, so glad tidings for everyone who already uh, have this behavioral change. May Allah make us steadfast in this path. I mean, and so for the second audience is uh, maybe is some of you who haven't really taken the religion to, like hasn't really taken this religion seriously at all. However, I would like to congratulate everyone first. You know, like. The fact that you're here, you are acknowledging, uh, you, the fact you're here in this masjid fulfilling the obligations of the Muslims is a sign that Allah still acknowledges your iman in you. In the same surah, Salatul Jumu'ah, Ya ayuha ladhina amanu idha nudya li salat, Ya ayuha ladhina amanu. Ya ayuha means that it's, yeah, it's, Allah is calling everyone without exceptions. Ya na amanu means that doesn't matter if you like, have a low iman, you're like this level, you're, you're high, like no exception. If the Jum'ah prayers come, come to the masjid. The fact that you're here is already confirmation of your Iman by Allah subhanahu wa, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although, maybe some of you come here just to, feel, just to fulfill the obligations, you know. You sit down. Sometime you came, sometime you're still busy with the scrolling social media. Still checking out your email sometimes. I... Sometimes, I even, like, one time I see a brothers, he was buying stuff whenever, like, whenever the khutbah was being played, he was buying stuff on Amazon. Like, come on, brother, you know? Can you, like, just, if, if you're still there, if, you, if you're not there yet, can you even dedicate even one day for Allah? And it's not only one day, it's only a few hours in that day, too. Just doing dhikr, you know? Just learn about the deen, maybe watch videos about Islam. Do, like, recite Salatul Kaf. It's here, just focus. Do this, like... Just put full your attention in this like um, in this like short minutes, you know. And the thing is, like you know, I found it funny, you know. Allah is the one who's been providing for us, right? And if you were to increase your mindfulness to Allah, if you were to increase your taqwa to Allah, increasing your ibadah, developing your taqwa. Not only Allah will give you success in the akhirah, Allah will also increase it to you. Just like the previous, just like the example from the previous one, right? Like Abdullah ibn Auf. There is not a, uh, there is not a single, there is not a single uh, verse about taqwa in, in, in the Quran, except that Allah attaches a worldly benefit to it. Yeah. Maybe you're stuck in like one problem that you've been like dealing with for a long time. It, seem, it seems impossible to solve. Or maybe you are in a desperate financial situation. Increase your taqwa and Allah will solve it. As it is mentioned in Surah Al-Talaq. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا And whoever is mindful of Allah, He will make a way out for them. وَيَزُّقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبَ And provide them from sources that they could never imagine. So if you like, you're stuck in this problem right here, and you, you don't even expect that this outcome will, will happen. Yet it did, because Allah, because you increase your iman, you increase your taqwa, you increase your ibadah, and also if, if some, uh, that's that's how that's how taqwa works. It gives you both success in dunya and akhirah. You know, and of, and some of you maybe like our students, and you were looking to pass that exam. It's difficult, you know, it's a difficult exam, low pass rate. Increase your taqwa, and Allah will increase like your knowledge. As is confirmed in Surah Al-Baqarah, at the uh, uh, ayat Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat 282, at the end of this um, of the ayah, it says, "Wattaqu Allah, wa yu'allimukum Allah." Whoever is mindful of Allah, Allah will instill their ilm in them. So I find it tragic that some of uh, some of the students right here, they're taking exam in Ramadan. You know, Allah is the one who gives the ilm, right? Yet they. You know, they don't even fast in Ramadan just, just, just because like, they have like, an exam to pass. Like, what is this? You know? And also, Ramadan is around the corner. You know, it's Sha'ban now. It's less than 30 days for Ramadan. You gotta prepare for it. 
it's easier to do on ibadah if you're already used to it, right? Get close to the Quran right now, learn the hadith, then in Ramadan you increase it. Not just like you become like uh, you do all the stuff, you know, suddenly, suddenly change in Ramadan, you know. Liberal Muslim like uh, throughout, throughout the year and the true Muslim <laughs> on, like, on Ramadan. Don't, don't be like that, yeah. And with that, I conclude, I pray to Allah that He will guide us into taking His deen more seriously, will improve our lives, be better, and change. May Allah guide us, may Allah guide our family, may Allah reunite us in Jannah. Ameen, Rabbi Alameen. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوة يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين أعني بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم انصر انصر عبادك مستضعفين في فلسطين وفي سودان وفي يمن وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحمهم فإنك بهم راحم ولا تعذبهم فأنت عليهم قادر اللهم ارحم نوافهم وجب كسرهم وتولى أمرهم أحسن خلاصهم يسر أمورهم وارحم موتاهم وتقبل شهداءهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم وداو جنهاهم اللهم لا ترفع لهم راية ولا تحقق لهم غاية واجعل لهم للظالمين من ولاهم إبرة وآية اللهم أرنا عدائك بأسك الذي لا يرد عن القوم المجرمين ونجهم برحمتك من القوم الكافرين اللهم أخصهم عددا وقتلهم بددا ولم تغادر منهم أحدا اللهم يا منزل الكتاب سريع الحساب هذا من أحزاب اهزب الأحزاب وزلزلهم اللهم زلزل الأرض تحت أقدامهم وقذف الرعب في قلوبهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار عباد الله رحمكم الله تقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Still, still, in the line and close the gaps. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين و.
ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاء ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا بل لهم موئد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا الله